Are you seeking fulfillment for your life? Do you want freedom from fear? That's why we're here. Welcome to Jesus 101, introducing you to the real Jesus. And now, here's your host, Elizabeth Talbot. Welcome to Jesus 101. Thank you so much for joining us. We're studying the book of Exodus. The series is called The Exodus Journey, and we are so happy you're joining us for this series. There are so many things that we can learn from this book, uh, the book of Exodus, because Israel was on the way to the promised land, and we are on our way to the promised land. And there are a few lessons we need to learn so that we can do this journey without anxiety, doing it from assurance inside of us, insurance and faith and trust. But many of us get anxious about things. And, and today we're talking about God as our provider. They had to learn that the God of the Passover and the God of the crossing over was also their sustainer. And this was a lesson that they were having a hard time learning. Um, I had parents who were very good to me. They always provided for me uh, emotionally and spiritually and physically. Um, I drew a, a little dress that is not too impressive, probably for most of you, but for me it brings great memories because there was a winter um, in which I needed uh, a new dress when I was a little girl and we didn't have enough money to, to buy a dress. This was back in Argentina. And so um, my mother took a sweater uh, that I had that was a white sweater. And then she took her dress, a red dress, and cut it um, in pieces and created this, this little dress that you see here. It was a really, really cute dress, but it was made of part of my clothing and all of her dress. And uh, I remember wearing this and it became in, in my mind a symbol of what my parents were willing to do in order for me to have everything I needed. And um, sometimes we wonder if God is like that, if he will provide absolutely everything we need. And it should be an easy answer, right? But for some reason, many of us um, struggle uh, day to day, wondering if we have a God who will also provide, who will also sustain, or is this just the God that created us and redeems us for the future, but does he really provide and sustain us now? Well, to help us figure this out, we have our guest again, Ty Gibson. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you. Yes. I'm enjoying it thoroughly. Yes, yeah, it's a, it's a great series, the Book isn't of Exodus, it? isn't yeah. it? It's a great book to learn lessons from, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And hopefully our audience will get assurance, yeah. uh, trust. Because our of, theme is, is yeah. really trusting the Lord. When we don't understand. When we don't understand. Which is what yeah. was happening in the Exodus, and we are going to see it here. The things that they encounter, they get anxious because they're saying, what's going to happen? Who's going to feed yeah, us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And instead of saying, okay, the Lord has done so many miracles, he probably will right. do another one, right? Yeah, yeah. So they were just struggling with it, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I love today's topic <laughs> because uh, these are real needs. They need water. They right. need food. Right. Uh, but they're struggling uh, Mm -hmm. uh, if they're going to trust God or not. Yeah. Have you ever struggled with uh, God's I, provision? I have. Um, yeah, when when I was pretty young, mm. um, my my mom passed at an early age, and I was the oldest of four children. Mm. We were basically, we found ourselves standing in a home that my mom owned, um, and she just died of lymphoma. And uh, She was and young? She was 41. Oh. Yeah, and uh, I had two younger brothers, one younger sister, and there we were standing in this house. Oh, what next? What wow. next? Wow. So, so we really needed the Lord to come through for us and to provide uh, physical everything, food everything. and everything. emotional support yeah, yeah. and the whole thing. The house was about to be sold out from under us, mm -hmm. and uh, we would basically just be left standing there on the streets, wondering what to do next. And wow. and uh, How scary. the Lord orchestrated one thing after the all. other. It just, was it was amazing. Wow, yeah, yeah. Pro providence. Mm -hmm. And hopefully our audience today, if, if you find yourself in a spot like this, hopefully this um, is going to encourage you because we have two stories uh, about the miraculous ways in which God provided for mm -hmm. Israel. Yeah. So let, let's dive into it. This All is right. Exodus chapter 15. We're going to start on verse uh, 22. Uh, and uh, this is their first problem 
after they cross. Mm-hmm. the sea, right? right this is right. their first problem. So uh, after uh, a while, they can't find any water to drink and they get to a place where there's some water, but they can't drink it. So verse 23. Verse 23, now when they had come to Mara, they could not drink the water of Mara for the water was bitter. Therefore, they named the name of the place was called Mara, Mara. which means bitter, yeah. You know, I was looking at some archeological records and some new things that they have found. And there are some wells in the overall area where they had been, the Israel had been, mm-hmm. that still until now, yeah. uh, it still has bitter water. And it's so bitter that not, not, uh, people nor animals can drink it. And it's still there today, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, so if you go, you will see the, 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 the fact that the, there is a bit of water there in yeah, that yeah, area. Isn't yeah. it crazy? It's crazy. It's, it's, it's a testimony to the historicity <laughs> the history. of the, the story. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. But um, the part that I like about this story is the fact that they had expectations because I think the hardest thing is when you have expectations and they don't come through. Yeah. They see water. I, I imagine them yeah. running towards the water yeah. when they taste it. Is bitter. So, yeah. well, what do you think about well, dreams deep, and expectations that don't work out? Yeah, well, they're deeply disappointed because they have been provided for. But here's the thing that I think is strange. It's strange, but it's human nature. They are provided for within the parameters or the confines of slavery. Uh huh. Before you mean? Right, right. Uh-huh. So, so they come out of slavery, uh-huh. and, and now- they want to be provided for. In, in the same way, and they begin actually to prefer slavery with provision yes, rather than freedom. Yes, they say it freedom. all the time. They grumble yeah. and they yeah. say, "We wish we were back in Egypt yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and all of that." Yeah, and in this case, uh, the people grumbled again on verse 24, uh, saying, "What shall we drink?" And this is the part where I think Moses was learning so much about leadership <laughs> himself. Because, mm. you know, I'm the type of person, type A personality, I would have buried two million bottles of water uh, in the desert before I before, left. Yeah. You know, so, so that when, it, when, when we need water, yeah. I say, oh, ta-da, I know where it is. Yeah. He had to learn um, to be a leader that just simply uh, said, I don't know, what, uh, let me ask God. Mm-hmm. Okay, God, where are we going to get water? Uh, that is, is a difficult trade uh, uh, that every leader uh, has to learn to trust God because every once in a while we will run out of options. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. plan A, plan B, plan C, and... There, there's, there's a hierarchy of leadership. Mm-hmm. You know, any person who is a leader is under leadership. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, God is, is the, ultimate. The, the ultimate leader. And uh-huh. so, so this is a, a fabulous demonstration yes. of, of the people depending on Moses, but Moses depending on God. And constantly. And, and, and the, the reason why I, I like these stories is because it challenges me as a, as a, as a leader mm. uh, to be able to say, uh... I don't know, let me ask God. Yeah. Because I want to have plan A, plan B, plan C, right. burying the water, <laughs> bottles of water yeah. in the desert, yeah. right? Uh, I, I don't know is the best answer sometimes though. I mean, if you if you don't know, you don't know. Yes. And actually that opens a door for God to do things that even you're un- not expecting as a yes. leader. Yes, and, and I'm very hard headed in that sense. So God had to place me in in positions where I absolutely run out of answers, Mm -hmm. you know, so, and I don't know about you because you look like a very nice guy, but maybe, maybe God (laughs) had to teach you a few things yourself. The Lord has had to teach me a number of things along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Are you getting there already? Yeah. You said you're type A. I'm type A on steroids. Uh, Oh, you are? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, now I understand a lot of things uh, about this. Uh, Great, great, great. So submission doesn't come natural to me. Yeah, me neither. To look to the Lord isn't natural for me. I'd rather, I'd rather figure out a solution myself. Exactly, exactly. But I've experienced a number of times yeah. where my solution is subpar and yeah. causes pain. Absolutely. Mm. And that's why what was happening to the things, uh, to the, the people of Israel, they wanted their own solutions their own way. Yeah, and, yeah. and it wasn't going to work that way. Yeah. God was teaching them mm, some things. Mm. And so um, Moses cried out to the Lord, if you want to read verse 25. Yeah. Um, of chapter 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast, uh, when he cast it into the waters, the waters became sweet. And this is yeah. Th- yeah, this is one of the strangest miracles for me in the Bible, because God decides to take what they have that is bitter, 
and make the same thing sweet, not change them, mm. not for them to go somewhere else. Right. It's, it's like you're in a circumstance and God doesn't take you away from the circumstance, but makes the circumstance bitter from bitter to sweet. Yeah. The same water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? And I do believe that there's a symbol of the cross yeah, yeah. here because, uh, I mean, what are the chances that you put a little branch? Oh, now it's sweet. I think that God was teaching them yeah. that um, God was going to put a tree uh, in the worst of situations of humanity, yeah, the yeah. cross, and it was going to become sweeter, what had yeah. been bitter. I actually do believe all of this is a symbol of Christ. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's all symbolic, pointing forward. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, because God wouldn't need the stick to make a sweet. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. obviously the tree or the branch or whatever was teaching them something. Oftentimes God isn't interested in in delivering us out of trouble but mm. but delivering us in, in the, the trouble. trouble yeah we're in the situation yes. and yes. and and how can he provide for us in that situation sometimes he provides peace that makes the situation yeah, sweet yeah. sometimes he just changes things around sometimes he changes us but there's that trust factor because yeah, because if, if we believe that God only has our best interest at heart, that yeah. he's not our enemy, yes. that he only has our best interest at heart, then whatever he provides is yes. exactly what, what needs need. to be provided. Exactly, yes. and, and we can relax. Yeah. But, you know, most of us have our human nature that <laughs> fights that, right? And at that moment, God revealed um, a name. of. Uh, uh, remember Yahweh that he had revealed mm -hmm. before? Now he's going to add a word to Yahweh, and he's going to say, well... I did this so that you may know at the end of verse 26, it says that I, Yahweh, am your healer. Yeah. So this is in Hebrew, Yahweh Rophe. Yahweh Rophe, which means Yahweh, I am, I am your healer. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure all of us need that side of God. <laughs> yeah, and that that is prophetic, yes. messianic, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. Because, that, because Jesus is going to yes. come into the world as the ultimate healer. Yes, by his stripes, we are, are healed. healed. Yes. That's why I'm, I'm trying to say that God did so many visualizations uh, to teach them who mm -hmm. he was and yeah. what was coming yeah, up. Yeah, and yeah. I believe very strongly about this. And uh, so anyways, uh, they they had water sweet water, they were able to drink it. And then, mm. then he did move them to Elim on verse 27. Elim uh, is, is a word that means large trees. So they eventually did get to an, a, an oasis that had mm. 12 springs of water and 70 date palms, says verse 27. But before that, he wanted to make this, uh, the bitter waters sweet so that they would learn something about yeah. him. I get the sense in the story though, that, that, that God is really dealing with the people where they're at. Yes. He, he would rather... Uh, them be at a different place, but yes. he has to deal with them where they are. Yes. are at the, yes. I mean, yes. all they can see is the physical necessities. Yes. But but there are there's this thread in Scripture that shows up over and over again. For example, with a Abraham, in one of the stories, God says to him, "I am your exceeding great reward." So so I'm yeah, often yeah. asking myself the question. Is is God merely a means to an end, or is God is it, an end in it Himself? Is so the greater reward that, yeah. that I mean, God would yes, rather, yes, yeah, yeah, God would rather the people be be you know the providing of water, food. It, it's let's very move basic. on. Let's move on. Yes. That's very basic. Let's yeah. move on past that and yeah. let's have a relationship. Yes, let's, and, and that's coming up a little bit farther down where He wants to enter in a covenant with yes. them. But um, I am very fascinated by the topic of moral de development. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I have studied uh, moral developmental processes and models and how God always had to work with the society where they were and to elevate yeah. them one one level. He couldn't go from one yeah. to six. Yeah. He had to go from one to two, from two to three, yes. from three to four, yeah. right? And so he's trying to teach them that he's their provider of rest, of salvation, yeah, of yeah. redemption, yeah, all yeah. of that, but yeah. he's doing it through water and bread. Yeah, yeah. These are, very these, basic. These, these are a bunch of five-year-old adults. Yes, <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. So here he tells them, I am Yahweh Rofe, I am the Lord, your healer. Mm -hmm. And they move on and now they're hungry. So let's read uh, uh, chapter 16 now, verse 1. 16, verse yeah. 1. And they journeyed from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month. So it's exactly one yeah. month yeah. since they left, because yeah. they left on the 14th uh, night yeah. of the first month. Now we're in the 15th day of the second month. So one month has gone by. And they're, and they're already just completely... Yes, 
disintegrating. <laughs> and verse two, again, this, that word, we, we get the word grumble, 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 grumble yeah. so many times in chapter 16. Yeah, my oh. version says complained. Okay, yeah, verse two. Yeah, Listen. they're leveling complaints. Then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Yes, and they do that, what you just mentioned a moment mm -hmm. ago. They said, why would we have died by the Lord's hand in yeah, the yeah. land of Egypt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they remember this thing. When we sat by the pot of meat when we ate bread yeah. and this and that and and all we like, want is stuff 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 and more stuff yeah i don't know if you've ever thought about this but somebody confronted me with something one time mm -hmm. i was worrying and i was just grumbling and complaining mm -hmm. and this person looked at me and she said you know that worry is a soft form of atheism wow that that's very I said, what are you talking about she said the fact that you're worrying and not trusting means that you don't feel you know, that god exists right. or that he at least he cannot do what you that's want right. him to do that's right wow. worry is a soft form of atheism yeah i i read something about worrying being a, a form of unbelief and i was struck by that yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a, so now they're grumbling uh, for food. Of course, it's a basic need. They need they need food. Mm. And this is where I, I'm saying this verse that says, don't lean on your own understanding. Um, because the, the, the answers of God were ridiculous. They were not logic. What do you mean? They, we want bread. Oh, okay, I will rain bread from heaven. Yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. they're not something that, that they would have thought of or that they could have... Right come up with it, they, yeah. they made no sense to them. Right. Um, uh, you know, and God also had those answers. Mm. Throw a stick, it will become sweet. Yeah. Uh, I will rain bread from heaven. Uh, hit that rock and yeah. water's gonna come out. Yeah. They're not uh, yeah. resources that no. are normal. No, it, it's, <laughs> it's a way of providing for <laughs> yeah. very immature people. Yeah, and at the same time, we all need sometimes that type of, I mean, I sometimes have prayed for, to God to help me find my keys because mm. I need to go somewhere. And sometimes yeah. you have a basic need. Yeah. And I have to trust that my God is not only just um, interested in my overall salvation. Right, right. <laughs> but, but your keys. My keys, <laughs> yeah. right? And yeah. I found that God is interested in the, yeah. in the littlest yeah. Of things. I don't know if that's a yeah. word in English. But. Oh, my son Jason was with me on a, a mission trip one time. He was like eight years old and he bought this, this ornate knife in the mission field and got it all the way back to the United States. And we were visiting some friends on a 40 acre piece of property. Mm. 40 acres. Wow, he a lost it on that 40 acre piece of property tromping around with uh, the other children. Uh, and then we couldn't find it by the time we had to you we, know, end our visit and go back home. The next year, we were visiting the same family on that piece of property, <laughs> and we said, shall we look for the knife? And we're not gonna find it, of course. I mean, it's somewhere on this 40-acre yeah. piece of property. And as we're looking, my wife Sue says, let's just pause and pray. <laughs> so Jason, our son, is standing there, and, and we pray, and she just simply says, Lord, please help us to find this knife <laughs> for Jason. I'm not joking, we open our eyes, and the dog, the lab, that is the pet of this family, is standing right there with that knife in its wow. mouth. Oh, wow. So strange. Yeah, wow. But, but it, it, shows, it showed Jason, our uh, son. Oh, I'm sure that this was yeah. a way that God yeah. communicated with your son to say, believe I am I here. I care about even the small the things, things that impact you. Wow, I love, yeah. I love that story. <laughs> well, they started grumbling and God said, I'm going to uh, rain bread from heaven. This is verse four now of mm. chapter 16. And um, he, he tells them, uh, I'm going to rain uh, something that you don't know what it is, but you're going to eat this. And as a matter of fact, you will also have meat because the quails are coming. Right. And the yeah. quails came, they had meat. And in the morning, they, um, they go out and they find this flaky thing, says the Bible, a flaky thing that, that they didn't know what it was. Mm. See, if I, if I put this on your hand, what is it? Exactly. What is it? <laughs> it's <laughs> manna, I guess. Yeah, there you go. What you is can, it? You can, see, it's flaky, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what they said. They said, what is it? And if I had to guess what this is, yeah, Elizabeth, well, no, 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 don't, don't guess, don't guess, don't guess, don't guess. But this, this is the consistency that it had because it says that it was flake, uh, like a flaky thing that yeah. in the morning, if the sun came up, it would melt. Right. Right? So what happened was, they said, what is this? Verse 15. What is it? Do you want to read it? Verse 15. Verse 15. So when the children of Israel saw it, 
uh, they said to one another, what is it? <laughs> For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, this is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Yeah, so the, uh, what is it in Hebrew is manu. Yeah. Manu, and that's why we call this manna, yeah. which means what is this? Yeah. <laughs> <What> <laughs> right? is this? Yeah. And, We've and, never and, seen this before. Th and for 40 years, they're going to eat this. Yeah, that's monotonous. Yeah, we have. I'm sure they got very creative on what to do with this. Yeah. I'm sure they, they did some bread and different things. But God is teaching them that he's going to uh, provide for them mm -hmm. in unusual ways. Yeah. Now, there is uh, something else in this chapter, and is that he's starting to teach them that he's their provider of spiritual rest, emotional rest, and physical rest. Mm -hmm. So they're uh, there to observe the Sabbath. This is the first occurrence of the Sabbath uh, for the people of Israel that had been enslaved for so many years. Yeah. Now God is saying, mm -hmm. I want to teach you this, that there is a day that I want you to stop and rest to, knowing that I am your provider. So we're going to stop and talk, um, watch a video on the Sabbath. What is the Sabbath that God is teaching the people of Israel? And then we will continue. When God created humankind, he gave us the gift of a weekly day of rest and restoration. It was designed as a perpetual feast of remembrance for us, God's creatures, to pause and celebrate who He is. After the six days of creation, God Himself rested on the seventh day and set it apart as a memorial for His children. In the Sabbath, God revealed many aspects of His love and grace, reminding us that we can truly rest because He is our provider, our Creator, and our Redeemer. This is why God included the observance of this day in His commands, that we may live with hope and wholeness. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. He knew that his creatures would need a weekly pause to remember that he provides true rest, which restores us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So he created the Sabbath for us. When Jesus walked among us, he also worshiped on this day, and he declared himself the provider of rest and the Lord of the Sabbath. He was intentional to perform many of his healing miracles on the Sabbath to demonstrate that the seventh day is designed to point us to the healing and wholeness available in him. Ultimately, the Sabbath day is a symbol of our redemption, a weekly reminder that we can live without anxiety of the future because we have the assurance of salvation in Jesus Christ. We rest in Him, for at the cross He did everything necessary for our salvation. The author of Hebrews summarizes it this way, So there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for the one who has entered His rest has himself also rested from His works as God did from His. Yes, Jesus is our Creator and our Redeemer, and the Sabbath is a foretaste of our salvation and eternal life with Him in complete peace and rest. I love this video because it explains uh, this gift that God has given humankind to rest one day a week. Um, to rest knowing that everything is taken care of, that he's yeah. the ultimate provider. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think uh, he was trying to teach them with this? Well, I think it's fabulous that, that he's not just teaching them to rest physically, mm -hmm. but he's teaching them to rest spiritually from the anxiety of, of having to provide for themselves. Absolutely, and, and that's and the point. And ultimately, that's pointing forward to resting in, in Christ. Christ 
right. for the salvation that we have in Him, mm, that's and right. that we don't need to manufacture our own salvation. That's right, and and that's exactly what He's doing with this day. Let, let me read on verses 29 and 30. The Lord has given you the Sabbath, therefore He gives you bread for two days on the sixth. They were supposed to collect twice on the sixth day. Remain every man in his place. Let none man go out of his place on the seventh day. And the people rested on the seventh day. This mm. they they mm. finally rested. Can you imagine a, a slave nation? Yeah, yeah. Resting, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's amazing. It's amazing. That th this is the topic that I uh, studied on my PhD dissertation. What does it mean to rest in mm. Christ, where we let our whole way down, you know? Yeah. And um, that we allow Him to give us this level of assurance that we can actually rest. Yeah. It, it, you said you read this book, right? I did read this book, yeah. <laughs> we want to offer you this book for free. It's called, I Will Give You Rest. And the subtitle is The Eternal Gospel for the Weary Soul. So yeah. if you download our app, the Jesus 101 app, and on the offer code section, you put uh, Exodus 7, because this is our seventh program in the series, we will send you this, this book for free. We will ship it for free also in the USA. But if you are in a different country, We'll still give you the book for free, but you have to pay the shipping <laughs> because sometimes it's, it's hard for us to do that. But the book is free. So yeah. hopefully you will order it. And this is, talks about resting in Christ. Yeah. What, yeah. what is the Not real meaning of the rest, Sabbath? Not just physical rest, but spirit, salvational rest. Yeah, that's yeah. the point. Because the Sabbath is actually pointing to a state of mind where, where we are the Sabbath at soul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that where we say, okay, God has done everything that was needed. You know, one of the ultimate verses on this is Hebrews chapter 4, verses mm -hmm. 9 and 10. Yeah, yeah. It says, we rest from our works in Christ like God rested in creation when yeah. he was done yeah, yeah. With, with creation. So right? powerful, so powerful. So yeah. we, don't, we don't need to be anxious about our salvation because no. it's an accomplished fact in, in And Christ. that's the point. Yeah. It's an accomplished fact. Yeah. And so the lesson that we want to learn today that I have here, lesson number seven, our creator and redeemer is also our provider mm -hmm. uh, of regular things, daily things, ultimately of our salvation. Yeah. And so that we don't live with this anxiety that what's coming next? What am I going to do? Yeah. God says, I got this. I've got this. Yeah, I mean, what a profound topic. Yeah, yeah. I got so we this. can just take a deep sigh of relief and just say, I can move on yes. with my life and yes. live for others because he's already lived and died for me. Yeah, uh, wow. Yeah. If we all could get there, we will all be a lot less anxious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to head to the cross where I find my full rest. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go there. Thank you for being here, Ty. Thank you. Yeah. Really appreciate it. And so... Here we find that the way that my parents provided for me when I was a little child, uh, God has said, look, I'm providing for you a robe, a robe of righteousness. It's my robe. You can, you can uh, know that I have done everything that was needed for you so you can be covered. You know that the whole gospel is a clothing crisis from Genesis all the way to Revelation. What are we going to wear? Adam lost his robe of righteousness and instead of going back to the Savior, he said, okay, I'm going to put some fig leaves. Are you trying to put some fig leaves on? God says, I have provided you everything that you need. He who, who has given us his son, won't he with him give us all things? Rest. He is the provider. He's the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer. 